one seat, 23 candidates. It's countdown to the November the 16th governorship election in Kogi State. Hello and welcome to Standpoint. I'm Ibrahim Shita. It's almost crunch time in Kogi. The electoral umpire, INEC political parties, their candidates, and indeed the people of the state are all set for the governorship poll. Let's head over now to Abuja, where the group controller of Current and Public Affairs, TVC News, Babajide Konlade, who told you, is with the candidates of the People's Democratic Party. This is a special interview with Engineer Wada, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Kogi State. Engineer Wada has been a politician for some time. Now he wants to be governor of his state. And my first question to you is, what makes you qualified to be governor of Kogi State? Thank you very much. Um, all my life I've been in the public sector, a civil servant, and I've seen how organizations have been run, especially mine. I've been working at Nigeria Post Authority till July this year, uh, when I had to retire voluntarily to join the governorship race in Kogi State. Before then, I've held several challenging positions, right from the time I joined the organization. But the key ones has been one, the chief port engineer of Tinkan Island Port in Lagos for four years. So that exposed me to how uh, to run and manage facilities. And uh, another key appointment I had in my civil service career life is that of port manager, Calabar Port in the Niger Delta part of Nigeria, where the whole port was for me to manage men infrastructures and resources of the port and uh, of course the experience I garnered there cannot be overemphasized. After some two and a half years in Calabar I was then posted to an airport in River State as port manager and of course that was based on my good performance in Calabar port because an airport is a step ahead of a Calabar port. From there I was posted in 2015 to a subsidiary of Nigeria Ports uh, Authority, the CV Properties Limited, as a managing director and chief executive officer. And I was there for almost four years till July 2019, where I voluntarily retired to participate fully in partisan politics and, of course, as a governorship aspirant of uh, the People's Democratic Party. And uh, of course, when the primaries came, God is in infinite mercy, gave me the victory. And I emerged as a candidate of the PDP. And uh, with all this experience I've told you, that has exposed me to prudent management of men, of resources. And I know that is what my state Kogi is lacking right now. And uh, out of that patriotism as an indigenous of Kogi State, I feel we can have a better government than what is obtainable now, where everything to me is wrong. There is no governance in that state as far as I'm concerned. And that prompted me to throw in the toy, even though I had some, even though I had some years to go. Because uh, if it's not done now, the damage that will be done in the next four years under this very government will be so big that it will be very difficult to recover. Yes, you talked about the primaries of your party, where you emerged as a standard bearer. There are many people who remain unconvinced that the primaries were free and fair. And one of your colleagues who took part in that primary election is still in court. Some party leaders assisted your victory. Did you really deserve to win? I deserve that victory. One, I've been interacting with party faithfuls for almost two years before the day of the primaries. I didn't just start a few weeks or months to that time. And of course, I had gone around the 21 looking, uh, local governments in the state soliciting for their support and votes, selling my programs for the state if I eventually match the candidate. So they were not new to me. I invited them for interactive sessions in Abuja many times. 
or the five party critical members of all the local governments of the state sold my programs that may encourage them to vote me on the day of the primaries. So many people did not know what volume of work I had put into this uh, uh, primary election because I was serious about it. No, it's not, it's not, it was not just like I'm interested in playing politics because everybody wants to play. And on that day, I think Governor Fintir of uh, Adamawa State was straight to point that he's not here to do anybody's bidding. And the night before the primaries, he called all the aspirants together and told us point blank that it, he was going to carry a very free and transparent election. Gave us our tax that day, told the party executive of Kogisi that he doesn't want them to have any business with uh, the primary election because he doesn't want any sentimental or biased behavior. And of course, anybody who was in the stadium that they saw that Governor Fintir himself was counting the delegates for each local government himself. And of course, all of us, the aspirants, saw that the process was very transparent. Till the unfortunate thing happened around, I can't say precisely, but a little bit before 1.30 a.m. I'm not very sure. And as at that time, all the sorting and collation was completed. It was just counting. And of course, when they were in the process, they had counted, there were about 10 ballot boxes. They had counted about seven and a half boxes, where it was clear from the audio, from the announcement that the name Wada Musa Engineer, Engineer Musa Wada, was recording every second. And of course, people as I now knew where the victory was going. All of a sudden, there were sporadic gunshots all around the stadium. Of course, <laughs> all of us, including me, had to scamp scamper for safety. In the process, I fell down. I'm sure I didn't have my leg. I ran and were, would, actually, I didn't know where I was because nobody knew where the guns were coming from. But luckily, that day, the arena, there was heavy security presence where the whole election materials were, including Governor Fintiri and his uh, committee members. So the incidents did not affect the arena. So as at that time, they were on the seventh and a half box, remaining two and a half ballot uh, boxes to be counted. The following morning, I was in my hotel room, nursing my pains, and I had a call, and I'm sure the, the, those calls were given to other aspirants, that where were we? I said, uh, I was in my hotel room, and there was this order that you should come to the hotel or the apartment where the committee members were. Before I came there, I saw that other aspirants were there, including security agents, the representative of INEC, the same group of people that were there witnessing the election. And they asked all the aspirants question that, the seven and a half boxes counted. Everything is intact. The remaining two and a half were there for us to see, for counting to continue. Because it was getting late, a candidate must emerge within 12 hours of that counting, or the PDP will not field any candidate. And we all agreed as aspirants, because most of the ballot papers earlier counted were left in the scene on tampered with. The committee members gathered all together in a Ghana must go back and they showed us all this. And as all aspirants agreed for the counting to continue. So the counting continued. The remaining two and a half boxes were counted in our presence. The aspirants, all other security agents were present. And at the end of the day, the counting was done publicly where I emerged as the winner with 748 votes. The second person, the second uh, aspirant had 710 votes. So I led with 38 votes. That made me the winner. So when they say, of course, I'm new in politics, like I told you, I just retired voluntarily July this year. So I didn't have a political godfather who could have assisted me into victory, except God. So the issue of 
it was not a credible primary. I don't know where that will come from because all of us, in short, as I speak with you, the remaining aspirants have endorsed my candidacy and that they were satisfied with all that went on. Yeah, many people felt that even before the election, that within the Wadab family, there would have been one voice. But that was not what we saw before yes. the primaries. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's about democracy. I had not the ambition of being part of the Kogi political process. And uh, like a family will have, my brother was once a governor, and uh, he indicated interest too. But as at the time, indicated interest, like I told you, I'd been working on my own for almost three years. So I had a lot of people who have committed their time, energy, resources. So it was not all about Musawada again. So at the time, indicated his interest, it was too late for me to withdraw from the race. But that is not to say we had any problem. We agreed that, well, if you contest anybody who wins, that's the uh, wish of God. Now, what was the relationship between you and Dino like at this time? Fantastic. In short, Dino, because we had that, he didn't want to be the DG of your campaign uh, organization. When the party approached him, I think there was a problem somewhere. I don't think he was contacted before with the announcement. The announcement. And I think he felt with his activities and programs, it wouldn't be comfortable for him to become the DJ at that time. But it was misconstrued to be that he refused. I don't think that it was misquoted. Now, even now, with him having to uh, stand for election again, even it, it will have then, been. Even before then, he had. Uh, stated categorically on his Twitter handle or Facebook account that he will even drive this process better. He will commit more energy, even more than the director general of the campaign. And we're on the same page now because he has an election coming. So we'll have to we'll fight the battle together. I want to take you back to what the national chairman of the APC said recently. He said the current governor had performed better than all previous PDP governors of Kogi State. Do you agree? I think that is one of the most unfortunate statements. I'm a citizen of Kogi State. I'm an indigenous of Kogi State. And I can tell you in a nutshell what the past PDP governors have achieved starting from Governor Ibrahim Idris. This is a man who built the stadium that we are using today in Lokoja. This is the man who built the specialist hospital that we are using today in Lokoja. This is the man who built the great Lokoja waterworks that is no more functioning because of the kind of government we have in place now. This is the man who built the Jokuta Lokoja road that since it was constructed, I'm an engineer, you can't see any pothole. You come to Governor Wada, another PDP candidate. Governor Wada made sure Kogi State University had all the accredited courses well serviced. The same Governor Wada built and renovated, I mean, renovated the abandoned Kogi State Hotel near Government House. This same Governor Wada built an international truck terminal, which would have achieved a very good traffic management for that major road that goes to Okini. As I speak with you, these big projects, the terminal has been abandoned, is depreciating every day. The Kogi State Hotel has been abandoned, unused. Rather, this current government is patronizing private hotels at more cost to the state government. So if a national chairman of a, a ruling party will come and say, without proper verification, what has Ayabelo achieved in his three and a half years? I can call just one thing. The so-called revenue house in Lokoja, a two-story building. Looking at the enormous resources that is, has come to him in the last three and a half years, and you see what you have going for you, his own revenue house, which by any calculation is a few millions of naira. 
compared to the huge allocations that has come to him in these three and a half years, compared to the Paris refund he got, compared to the bailout fund, you know, which is about 50.8 billion, compared to the federal government for about 13 point something billion, allocation should be necessary of 600 and something billion. And you have a project of millions to show for it. And this chairman of the ruling party will say his achievement in terms of is better than the PDP. From what I've told you, the facts are clear. You can visit a journalist. Go to Kogi, find that no salary payment for months, maybe 10 months, I don't know. All the infrastructures are decayed, from road to schools to hospitals. Nothing is happening. Go to the state capital, Lokoja. Take a car if you have any motorable road in that town. So we shouldn't be playing politics with facts. We shouldn't be playing politics with people's development. So what I mean, in a nutshell, this is the worst governor could be ever had. What do you intend to do differently? Because people will say talk is cheap. Oh, Yabelo is bad. Yabelo is the worst governor. What do you intend to do differently? Thank you very much. I will change the narratives in governance totally. Yaya Bello's governor is government is far from the people. What goes on in Lokoja? Some local governments don't even know who their governor looks like. Government is about the people. As a governor, by the grace of God, the government I will run will be people-oriented. It will be about the people. See, I have a civil service background. Issue of salary payment is the right of any worker, be it private or public sector in this country. I don't see a situation where salary payment looks like an achievement in this country. So I can't be governor of Kogi State today and, and owe a month's salary, talk more of owing up to 10 months. And you start telling people lies that I have paid salary up to date. I think it's a disservice not only to the people but to God. So what I'll do differently is that salary payment would be constant. Even if it means devoting the allocation to salary payment, I think I will do that. And let the private sector drive all that developmental stride in the state. It's about the people. And with my experience, I know I will not just come and sit there and be dependent on allocation. I will think out of the box. Kogi State is, is a gold mine that is, has not been tapped. We have a lot of mineral deposits. The limestone we have is bigger than just Dangote cement in Obajana alone. You have coal in Okaba. You have lead in Kogi. You have other mineral deposits. There's nothing wrong as a governor. You have a synergy with the necessary authorities. Obtain the license, take control of these mineral deposits, and bring in private sector, and go into an understanding with them. A lot of money will come out of that place. That if well tapped, you may not have to be waiting for this federal allocation. But we have a scenario now when the allocation comes from people gather around, split it, we don't know what is happening. We don't have accountability in Kogi. If I become governor of Kogi State, there will be what I call 100% accountability. Because as a government, you are accountable to the people. What is happening in Kogi State today is misgovernance, intimidation of the people, so that people cannot even express themselves. It cannot come from a, in civilized climes. Such a governor should not even think of re-election because I, I have people in Kogis, I have friends, I have relations, and what they are going through is worse than hell. So you don't play politics with people's lives, people's comfort, people's survival, and come and say the governor has done better than the past governments when the facts are there for everybody to see. To me, that statement is quite unfortunate. Okay, um, some time ago, you were shown on TV saying that nobody has uh, the monopoly of violence. And um, people came to the conclusion that your party was actually planning to go into that election with a violent disposition. Why did you make that statement at the time? Anybody who has followed Kogi politics knows that the current government in Kogi State, because of their uh, lack of proper governance for the people, believes the only way they do elections is through Togri, 
violence. I take you back. In 2015, under Governor Idris Wada, he stood the election with the late Prince Albert Kaudu. There was nothing like Togri. Election was free, fair, under a very peaceful atmosphere. Unfortunately, the winner of that election that the current governor is enjoying died and he became governor. In the first place, he didn't even win that election. Now, subsequent elections after Yayabelo came to power has been marked by extreme violence and deaths. And in most cases, the people that were killed are PDP supporters. I can give you a few examples. On the 9th of February, Benny Kani, a PDP House of Reps member, in a rally in Acharu, four people were killed by APC talks. During the presidential election, a young man, first time voter, Daniel Lomale, an 18 year old boy, was killed by APC talks. In Buluku, in Basa, local government, four people were killed by APC talks. The people that died were all PDP supporters. What they are doing, they are no experts. Any other person can do it. But because I've said in every forum, every forum that my election is not worth the blood of any son or daughter of Kogi State, I will never, and my party will never participate in anything violence. I rather challenge the security agent to take note of past elections in Kogi State. Even the ANEC chairman said in a recent interactive session that Kogi State is volatile. Yes. The Deputy Inspector General of Police Operation even said he is aware that private armies are being formed in Kogi State. That corroborates all that has happened in the elections under Yaya Bello in Kogi State. And if the security agents who are the custodians of law and order in the society are aware of all this, I hope they will be up to their job in the forthcoming gubernatorial election that no violence takes place. As I speak with you, we are aware that there are a lot of arms and ammunition being stored in all parts of the state. Recently, one APC chieftain, who is more like a talk, they call him the chairman of uh, Vice Chairman Kogi East uh, APC, said, and is in videos everywhere, that anybody coming to Kogi State, his name is Ahmed Atta, that anybody coming to Kogi State and is not coming to vote Ayabelo should rather stay back. What does that mean? He's threatening people that if you come and you're not coming to vote Ayabelo, you either go back or get killed because that is their stock in trade. Governor Ayabelo has been making some gains. Some members of your party have been defecting to the APC. Uh, some APC members that used to quarrel with him, that did not see eye to eye with him, are now back on his side. Do you still think that you can win this election? Everything put together. I think it's film show. What is film show? You know what? The rate of a, the, the number of APC decamping to PDP is so much that because we don't believe in stupid media hype, we are not uh, playing our own on any electronic or print media. But I can tell you, if there's any decamping going on, it's artificial. Maybe they will gather some people, give them some money, and say they are decamping. And in the real sense, more APC people are decamping to PDP. Because nobody, in his normal sense, would decamp for the sake of Yabelo in Kogi State today. Do you trust Ainek? Well, I won't tell you I don't trust them, but I won't tell you I trust them. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's our package on Standpoint. Thank you so much for watching.
I'm Ibrahim Shita. Enjoy your weekend. Bye now.